In Kentucky, an Adair County farmer is reporting promising results after his first winter using bale grazing to feed his cattle. Bale grazing is a new concept for most Kentucky farmers. The farmer sets out hay rolls and fields before winter feeding begins and restricts the cattle's access by using poly wire fencing. Once the winter feeding begins, the farmer removes sections of the fencing to make two to three bales available to the cattle at a time. Once they eat that, the farmer opens more sections. Besides feeding cattle, bale grazing can help farmers get some free fertilizer in the form of better manure distribution. I hope to be able to stand here and see thicker, greener grass here than places where I didn't do this. It has been heavily promoted as a winter feeding option in western states for years, but Kentucky's climate, geography, and soil types are vastly different from those states. Fred Thomas sought advice and assistance from Nick Roy, a Dare County Agricultural Extension agent, and Jeff Lemkuler, University of Kentucky Extension Beef Specialist. What we want to see is that with this field, that will have increased the nitrogen and the phosphorus and the uh, potassium levels in the regions that we fed the hay. And then hopefully then over time, because we've got more organic matter incorporated in the soil, that we'll also see an increase in soil health. And the, the Haney test will hopefully, hopefully show us an increase in soil health and more uh, micro, microbial activity, more microbiota that's doing its job and converting that into uh, organic matter and giving us a buildup of soil over time rather than a loss of soil over time. Until this past winter, like many Kentucky producers, Thomas sacrificed an area in one of his fields where he fed cattle during the winter. In years past, I'd been feeding down on the bottom, just not a good situation, and this worked perfectly, especially because um, I have some puny fields. They don't have a good grass stand. Uh, they need. They were low in uh, fertilizer. They needed some nutrients put back in them. So I was really taking care of two things, getting my cattle off the muddy bottoms and uh, getting my fields fertilized and more organic matter in them is what I was looking for. Roy and Lim Kuehler helped Thomas with background information, soil testing, and site selection. He lined the bales on ridge tops that were away from surface water and put in an alleyway so the cattle could access water. And, and as we look at where we might implement something like this, one of the things we wanted to do was to minimize the environmental impact and minimize the potential of nutrient runoff into uh, surface water. We tried to keep a buffer uh, on the really steep hillsides so that that grass could capture any runoff nutrients uh, and actually benefit from those. Thomas used bale grazing to feed around 36 head of cattle on average. Those cattle consumed about two-thirds of a roll per day and about one and a quarter rolls daily during the winter of 2014-15. He credits that to less waste from bale grazing. The cows look like they're in pretty good condition. It certainly didn't hurt them. Additional benefits Thomas reported included lower energy and fuel costs due to not having to use his tractor. In fact, Thomas didn't start a tractor to feed the herd this year. He also had less rot in his hay. While Thomas has found many benefits to bale grazing, it does have some potential downsides, including the cost of purchasing additional poly wire fencing, moving the fencing during the winter, and then purchasing seed and reseeding the field. Thomas said he will try bale grazing again next year, but will move the location and space bales further apart to minimize the impact the cattle have on the existing forages. UK Extension personnel will continue to monitor the project for improvements in nutrients and soil health. From the University of Kentucky College of Agriculture, Food and Environment, I'm Jeff Franklin reporting.